I'm a wife and a mother of three amazing souls. I have 25 years or more, actually I have more than 25 years of practical experience as a regenerative lifestyle coach. I'm the author of the book, Farm to Fork Meat Riot. And today I'm here with Miss Emily Penton, who is the founder and the developer of the Inner Clarity System. Welcome to my food church. Welcome, Emily. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, everybody, anyone who's interested in the type of work that Emily's doing, I'm going to have a link for her in the show notes below. So make sure you check that out. And, but today what we're doing is Emily and I, this, what we're doing here, this is us not doing anything. We're not doing this for money. We're not doing, we're not selling anything here today. We are, um, doing what we believe is the right thing to do. Um, It is our moral responsibility to share these truths with people. And so the conversations that we're having here um, about natural law are um, because we are really just interested in helping humanity better understand how our consciousness works, how our brains work, you know, um, like so that we're able to better Um, operate and raise our consciousness in our life experience and create um, a better life experience for, you know, anyone who's, who's seeking the truth, anyone who's um, interested in seeking this knowledge. So, um, you know, welcome. If you would like, please make your comments in the stream in all caps so that, you know, we can see them. We would love your participation in the conversation. So feel free to do that. Um, Emily, I finally was able to make it so that we can go live on YouTube and on Rumble. So today we're on both. Um, And so I'm really excited. I was trying to get Odyssey on here and we were having some technical difficulties. So it'll work it out work itself out, you know, we're, we're figuring it out, but anyone who is on rumble or on YouTube, please feel free to put all your comments in, in all caps so that we can see them. We would love for you to join us and participate in this conversation. So last week we spoke about, um, natural law and we were discussing, you know, consciousness, the frequencies, you know, um, of how we are, um, how, how different people are on different levels of consciousness based on the, how frequently they intersect with the truth. Yeah. And, you know, people want to know, like, what is natural law? What is this natural law that everybody's talking So I want to give everybody a working definition of natural law. Um, It is, um, you know, universal, non-man-made, binding and immutable conditions that govern the consequences of behavior. Um, Natural law is a body of universal spiritual laws which act as the governing dynamics of consciousness. Um, Natural law is a set of universal inherent objective. Again, non-man-made, eternal, and immutable conditions. Man didn't make these conditions and man can't, you know, change these conditions. We, we can't, we cannot, um, yeah, we don't create these. This is nothing that we, this isn't like mine or Emily's ideas or opinions or, um, like we're not the creators of this. This isn't our jam. It's not like our, I mean, this is our lifestyle. We're practicing our, our, our life by honoring natural law. Um, but there are immutable conditions that are governed. You know, the, the consequences of those behaviors are governed by natural law. Um, beings with the capacity for understanding the difference between harmful or non-harmful behavior. You know, this is this is what natural law is about. It is about, um, you know, people let's call it morality. I think that, um, you know, that's one thing I want to talk about today, you know, because everyone talks about um, equality. People talk about um, 
freedom. They talk about morale, morals, right? So today we're going to break that down um, as it pertains to natural law. Um, there's this thing, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, um, Emily, it's called moral relativism. Do you know what that is? I, th I think I've heard that. Um, and it kind of sounds like uh, make up your own. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's the destroyer of all freedom. Um, moral relativism is the ideology or like the religion uh, that objective morality does not exist inherently in nature. And that right and wrong are subjective constructs, which human beings may just invent and arbitrate according to time, location, circumstance, or preference. Um, and in truth, in reality, morality is objective. Um, rights can never become wrongs and wrongs can never become rights at any place or time, regardless of how many people believe or wish for it to be so. So like, you know, you can think whatever you want to think. You don't have to believe anything that we're saying here. No, we're not asking anybody to believe us. It is just what it is. The truth simply is. And why is it the destroyer of all freedom? Well, you know, typical expressions of moral relativism is, you know, you might have heard somebody say things like, um, or, you know, we might have accidentally used them ourselves before we were conscious of, you know, what we're saying. But like, you know, what's true for you isn't true for me. You hear that a lot? Mm -hmm. Or... Morality is a matter of personal opinion. That's funny. Um, we can't judge another person's morality. I think this is like the convoluted current day, um, you know, I'm, I'm a furry, I'm not a woman kind of thought. Yeah process. It's moral relativism. Okay. We can't judge another person's morality. That's funny. All societies have different moralities. Really? I mean, yeah, I guess right now that's kind of what's going on. Is it moral under universal law? No, it's not. It's not. I mean, let me give you an example. Like, do you think, Emily, if you're driving down the street and you see a person laying in the street, are you supposed to stop and just see if they're okay? Yeah. I mean, I think it's my moral responsibility. If no one else has already tended to this person, that must mean I'm the first person who's seen this person. Right. So I'm going to stop and see if they're okay. Now, I think that a lot of people who live in constant immersion in um, fantasy, like maybe they watch too much television, they're constantly, you know, um, playing video games, they're completely dehumanized to this reality that this person is laying in the middle of the road and we should just see if they're okay. And one of the things, you know, like, like we said before, we operate in love. Natural law is about operating in pure positive love. I have my angel. angel. And you have, yeah, you have love too. <laughs> and, you know, yes, I love the bacon, but also... I love you and I love everybody. Like, you know, I, I mean, we're only doing this because we, we love people and we want, we want, I know, you know, like maybe, maybe, you know, maybe we're kind of crazy because we want peace on earth. Okay. Maybe we're kind of crazy, but we're not crazy. <laughs> Actually, you know, okay. I want to, I want to tell you a story. Did you know that if you take a group of chickens and you free feed them and you provide husbandry for them in such a way that they are 
in endless abundance. They have open pasture, lots of bugs and everything, you know, um, plenty of food. They're free fed. So they are constantly given food. There's always food for them and there's always water for them. And they are always safe in, you know, in an area that, you know, like other beasts aren't going to just come and eat them. You know, they get plenty of sunshine. They have plenty of fresh air. They're living an abundant life, right? When you, when you have birds in a situation like that, you have a flock in a situation like that, then it is our observation that they eat when they're hungry, don't eat when they're not hungry. Different people, different birds eat at different times. Whatever they need, it's there. They're not fighting over each other. There's no pecking order. No one's ruling like over another. Um, and, and, you know, within the flock, there's um, just freedom and love and appreciation and just basking in the sunshine and the goodness, you know? Um, if you ever try to feed those birds on a schedule, like if you ever decide I'm only going to feed them and give them X amount of food and you create lack for them, when they begin to operate in this limit, limited supply at specific times, then there becomes a pecking order. Mm. Now they're fighting for the food when you put it in there, when it's feeding time, you know? Now there's some of them lording over others. Now there's some of them fighting for the bin over the others. Now, you know, uh, there's becomes weakness in the flock. Now the flock isn't thriving as a whole. Mortality goes up. This um, example of something that we've actually done on the farm, <laughs> you know, is, is equivalent to the lack mindset. If we were to give all humanity abundant abundance in everything, free energy. I mean, Tesla discovered free energy, okay? Did you know that there's a way for us to be able to plug ourselves right into the ground and have like an infinite amount of electrical power from our atmosphere? It is already, it was... It was something that was established, discovered. Science. I mean, like Tesla figured it all out. When was that? Hundreds of years ago. Okay. A hundred years ago, more than a hundred years ago. And so this technology is not new. And he discovered something that was ancient technology. This isn't the most advanced technology. Today's technology that we're using is not the most advanced technology that humanity has ever experienced. It's not. It's not. And and um, what's happened is that there's there are some people who have occulted or hidden this knowledge from the rest of humanity and um, they're using it. That knowledge differential as a power differential. But do you see how, you know, there's a there's a way for us to walk into a situation where we have free and abundant supplies for whatever it is that we need because it's tied to the soil, you know, and we can all live with that without the chaos that they want us to believe. The lie is the training is, you know, that we require a government so that there isn't chaos and confusion and madness and, you know, people running amok. But in the example that I just gave you, for example, if there, if everybody has all that they need and there isn't a lack mindset, there isn't a lack anywhere because no one's lacking in anything. 
there's no reason for us not to just operate in the liquid love that we are. Now, the bad idea that is, has been trained into us into believing these fault, having these false beliefs, you know, that, you know, we would end up in chaos and confusion or whatever. Um, we could just change our minds. I mean, just like you and I have decided that we no longer operate in chaos and confusion. We no longer operate in lack. I mean, there was a time when I was on food stamps and Emily was on food stamps, folks. Both of us were. There was a time when I just didn't think that I could afford a lot of things. And Emily did, too. And now I've been living on only the highest quality meats and food and lifestyle. And Emily is too. And I mean, I don't know. We're not abusing. We're not wasting. We're not hoarding. That's the other thing. Those birds that were limited they started hoarding. They started binge eating. They started doing these uh, abnormal behaviors due to the lack. But when they had, when they were being free fed, they didn't do that. So, what you think? Well, and I, you know, when I was operating in that lack mentality, um, I was constantly in fear. Um, I mean, every day it was, uh, I hope I don't get sick so I don't miss work. So I don't, so that I can pay my bills, um, so that I can get the food that I need to survive. And it was just this like hamster wheel that I was just like running on that, like, uh, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Like I was just like ready for the next tragedy. And now it's just like, I'm in a, different realm. Like I, I can see things happening in front of me, but they don't affect me. Like I don't feel all I feel is good. Like all I feel is, Oh, wow. I wonder what I'm going to learn from this experience. I wonder what my lesson is here. Um, I wonder how this is going to turn out. I can't wait to watch this unfold. I'm excited. I'm curious. Like, it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And it's a completely different way of living than with the way that I lived before uh, in that lack mentality. Me too. I was, I was constantly afraid of like, oh my God, are my kids going to get hurt? Oh my goodness. My husband, is he going to have a car accident? Is something going to happen to somebody? You know, you're worried all the time about I don't know what, like you come up with these crazy ideas, you know, um, and we had lost a child. Right. So I was very much like feeling like, oh, my goodness, I could I can't I could just lose everybody, you know. Um, and there was there was a lot of chaos happening as a side effect of that. And every day was a grind, you know, and then the minute that I allowed myself to have to walk in my full power and just do, you know, the moment that I started doing what needed to be done because it was the right thing to do, which was for me sharing the truth about like, it started for me with the food, right? Like I was just like, oh my gosh, did you know that we've been being poisoned and you know, they're poisoning our food? Dude, I did not know. Or the water or, you know, the medicine or whatever. And as things were happening and as I was realizing, I was like, oh my God, they're doing this too, girl. Oh my gosh. Hey, did you know that this is also happening? And are you aware that this is also happening? And at first, you know, you feel like, what? Who's doing this? And you want to, I don't know. I think the initial thing, you know, a lot of times people want um, blame, you know, they start walking to blame. You're angry. You know, you're looking for um, someone uh, to take responsibility for this. And then finally, I had to say, whoa, why am I allowing myself to be treated this way? Why am I allowing my family to be treated this way? Why am I allowing 
us to let other people make decisions like medical decisions for us. Why am I letting other people make decisions about, you know, um, what it is that we're going to have for our food, for our housing, for whatever? Like, why? Oh, because I think I can't afford it. I need them to pay for it. I mean, what do I need? Like, what is going on? And once you start asking yourself these questions, you know, like, what do I need? What do I, what do I even want? Is it, is it, is, did you have something similar like that? I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I definitely, I, I wouldn't say it was a long period of time. I, I kind of jumped. I think it was because of your scaffolding. Um, I, I, it was like, I had somewhere to go. I didn't stay in the, oh my goodness, what is happening very long? Because I soon had another conversation with you where you were like, it's okay, look, you know, you are in control of your destiny. You can take responsibility. You have sovereignty. So I think if, if I had been on my own and I didn't have you to have conversations with, if I hadn't read your book, um, I think I would have been in a dark, like, I think I would have been scared for longer, but it was just like a blip. It was like, a, oh. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, okay, good. Here's the, here's another idea. Um, and so I was able to jump into that sooner. I think that it's been amazing to watch you since then. Uh, now you're just creating your own scaffolding. And you've got this established for other people, which I just am so proud of you. Like, it's incredible. It's incredible. And, you know, folks, you guys make sure you go to that link in the notes below and see what, what I'm talking about. And you'll see exactly like how incredible it is. It's crazy. But, um, you know, it is it is it is my desire for everyone to just understand a, a few things. Like, did you know? that I, I just found this out myself, like the word government. Mm. Did you know that it means mind control? Mm, yeah. You, well, you told me, I mean, you get, you sent me that video and I was just like, what? When they really broke down the word. I thought, wow, this is crazy. You know, like, um, I know we sound like a bunch of crazy, crazy talkers right now. Look, everybody, is equal, you guys. Yes. Does, is everybody motivated in the same ways and things like that? No, but everyone under natural law is equal. What what I, what we mean is that everyone has the same exact rights. No one has any more or less rights than anyone else. Also, since rights are not created by humanity, and since they are the birthright of humanity that's gifted to us by our creator, the creator of the universe. Okay. Um, no human being or group of human beings is actually capable of granting rights to someone else. And no human being is capable of revoking these rights from anyone else. Um, but there are requirements there are requirements under natural law um, for freedom, okay? Because freedom, total freedom equals total responsibility. So let's talk about that a little bit. Like, for example, if I'm driving down the street and you're walking down the street, you're responsible for yourself knowing you might get hit by a car walking in, down the street and I'm driving down the street and I have to be responsible that I don't want to hit somebody who might be walking down the street. Okay. Now, if there's an accident and I hit you right now, what? This is the moment where current day humanity has been trained to be litigious threats. Oh, you better sue her. You better sue her. That's the first thing everybody, everybody's like, what can you get from her? Or, you know, 
that dummy was walking in the middle of the street. You know, there's these, these reactions that come up. They're beneath us, guys. How about, how about I didn't want to hit her and I'm devastated that I hit her. And she's probably also like, oh man, I was living dangerously because, and I, nothing was going to get me out of that street because I wanted to walk on the street because that's where I wanted to walk. And I knew that I was walking there and could get hit by a car. Now, what are the consequences of that, right? What are the consequences? Well, there's an immediate natural law consequence. She's like, oop, like crap, I shouldn't have done that. That was dumb, you know, because she got hit by the car. And I'm like feeling horrible. I'm feeling responsible for her. I mean, my heart's breaking. I feel guilty, you know. Let's, let's say that you don't die or anything, like you just got hurt, you know, and I'm doing everything that's in my power to help make it right, you know, then what else can you want from me? Are you hating me? You know, like the way that people are thinking, the way humanity is thinking today, the person who gets hit doesn't care at all about the person driving the car. They're so busy trying to know why that person hit them. They're never thinking about why was I walking in the middle of the street? And I'm not here to, to say you're stupid for walking in the middle of the street or that I'm horrible for hitting you. It's just that we were both <laughs> living dangerously, being free, right? And so we have to give each other grace or something right? The problem is that the way that humanity is thinking about things right now, it's immoral because everyone else is all of a sudden involved in this and they all have an opinion and they're ready to kill me because I hit you, you know, or, or they want to know, were you drunk? Was I drunk? Like, you know, or whatever, or something. There's always someone seeking the blame, Instead of you taking responsibility for what happened and me taking responsibility for what happened and us offering each other grace and forgiveness and love and like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you know, and you like, I didn't mean to do that. That wasn't what I was intending to do. Like natural law doesn't care about your intentions. Let's just start with that. But you and I can iron things out with each other if we know that we were both taking responsibility for being. Now, if something, God forbid, happened and you died, then whoever is looking in still has to know, well, I tried to keep Emily off the road. Emily didn't want to get off the road. She said she wanted to walk on the road. And I told her she could get hit by a car. You know, they'll probably never give me the grace of knowing that I didn't want to hit Emily. I didn't know she was going to be there. You know, now was I driving through a neighborhood at 100 miles an hour and you were in a neighborhood where I should have been more careful? Why do people drive like that in neighborhoods? When humanity starts behaving differently, you know, like right now, I think everybody's ready to jump on a teenager who starts driving and just say that they definitely were speeding and doing the wrong thing immediately when maybe they weren't. Maybe they're they're horrified that something happened. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's get to some other example. But like I'm I'm just saying that there are there are consequences for everything immediately. But no one is allowing these natural consequences to play themselves out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And we all have been programmed to believe and trained to believe that we need some type of regulation, you know, in place for our safety. Some third party has to decide how that situation is to be, is to be resolved. Do we really want that? Not me. 
I mean, I'd rather be able to deal with you directly or your family. I mean, if I, it took me the rest of my life to make, make it up to your family, to try to make it up to them. And, you know, maybe I could, maybe I couldn't, but that's between me and them probably, you know, it's not everybody else's business in the world. And we definitely don't need everyone else's pressure, you know, cause it could be that your family is just like, I know Emily, she's crazy. She would not listen to me and she's my daughter. And I know that she would just walk into the middle of the street and you know, that sounds just like her. She's going to walk in the street and get hit by a car. Well, bless her for living her life to her fullest, you know, and they could probably be fine with that because they know you. But when you have outside influences saying you should go try to get some vengeance, some something else, that's not that is violent. So that's what that's what gets us into, you know, how how fear can instigate, you know, it's it's an unconscious behavior, fear. Love is conscious. Fear is unconscious. This is based um, on the generative polarity. Polarity, you know, is one of the natural law principles. Then there's, you know, like knowledge. When you when you're walking in your knowing, I know Emily. Emily likes to walk in the middle of the road. You know, <laughs> that's acceptance of the truth, isn't it? Ignorance is refusing the truth. I know Emily likes to walk in the middle of the street, but she shouldn't have been hit and killed because I need Emily because I love her. Right? Isn't that what it ends up being? It's ignorance. Ignoring the truth that Emily likes to walk in the middle of the road. Hmm. I'm not, I don't want Emily to get hit by a car. Okay? So it's just an example. Yeah. I'm just using it as an example of how people take these things and turn them into what they're not, which creates chaos and confusion and pain and grief. Why do you think that when the chickens are running and somebody grabs a chicken and, and processes the chicken for dinner, the rest of the chickens don't care? They're just like, that was that slow one. Not me. You know? Or when the buffalo were running, you know, maybe that maybe I shouldn't be using these examples, but like <laughs> the truth is, you know, like their whole attitude is we're happy now and we're still happy now and we're always happy. And oh, we made it. <laughs> Isn't that what life is all about? It's about living dangerously because you're living. Living is dangerous. <laughs> you know, when you step out the door to go do something in life, are you wanting to be in a bubble? Do you want to hear it, feel it, smell it, taste it, touch it? Even if it like stings you. <laughs> Even if you get wet. Don't you like to go get dirty? I mean, I'm just saying, like, when you're living, then you're immersing yourself in all of these incredible sensory experiences, right? Sovereignty is an internal monarchy. Hmm. That feels good, right? Oh, yeah feels powerful. And confusion is internal anarchy. Because you are pitted against yourself. Hmm. I have this agorist flag back here. It really should just be all black as an anarchy flag. Because the more that I learn about natural law, the more I learn that I don't want to walk a line. I just want to be 100% anarchist. And anarchy means no masters, no rulers. No masters, no slaves. 
it doesn't mean go out and disrespect and destroy things. It means no masters, no slaves. But don't you think that we have enslaved ourselves when we choose to follow a law for safety? Like the worst thing that could happen is I might hit you with my car and you die. And I don't want that to happen. But you wanted to walk in the middle of the road. And I was trying to just drive joyfully from here to there and didn't expect anybody to be in the middle of the road. And I tried to stop, but I couldn't stop fast enough, right? Or something. Now, there's crazy people out there. And these days it feels like they just drive and don't care. I don't know how many times I've seen, you know, like you see someone get hurt or mistreated. What about the people that, you know, are being verbally abused and other people are just watching somebody yelling at somebody and no one says anything and nobody cares. And then they say, well, it's none of my business. Yes, it is. It's your business to, to just go and at least just look and just say, hey, behave. Sometimes saying behave doesn't mean you have to actually say anything. You just be looking over there like. What you doing? Isn't that generally enough? Yeah, just to be a witness. An observer. Yeah, just look at him and be like, hello. I see you. I see you cussing out that three-year-old. Yeah, like, you know. And if you see it long enough, you're going to be like, hey, come on now. We all have children. Listen, I know that there have been times when, okay, well, let me tell you when I got yelled at, I was in the parking lot with my two nephews and my two kids. It was Mina and Covey were with me. Mina was in my Bajorn and Covey and Marco were holding my hand and my dad was a little bit bigger. He ran in the parking lot for my van and he almost got hit by a car and I was screaming at him to stop. And I, we got to the car and I'm like, you cannot run away from me. Stop means stop. When I say red light, I mean stop. I said, you almost got hit by this car. And this lady was like, you can't yell at the kids. I said, I can yell at him when he was about to get hit by a car. It's a completely different situation. Right. And I was, was like, a safety I was, situation. Right. I was letting her know how it was, a, it was a, it was a safety situation issue at which moment she could have just said oh yeah honey you can't yeah you can't run in front of cars <laughs> you know but she was so busy trying to just get mad at me this is another thing that i'm saying we just have to give each other grace of course we can have a misunderstanding of course she could just have thought that i'm just being mean to the kid and then i'm telling her no, I had to yell at him because he ran in front of another car. And she could have said, yeah, you can't run in front of another car. And then I could have hugged him. And you know what I mean? Which I did, by the way. I did hug him and say, I love you. Like, you can't just be running in front of cars. You know? And I told him, I said, you scared me. You know? We had that understanding. I was able to talk it out with him. That lady could have, she didn't stay for that part. She could have stayed. If she'd have watched me a little bit longer, she would have realized that he scared the crap out of me. <laughs> like, I thought he was going to get hit by this car, you know? So, you know, we we do, um, you know, yell or get scared for a second, you know, because you recognize danger. That's different than walking in constant fear. I don't walk around just thinking, like, you know, my kids are going to get hit by a car. I don't. Anyway, I think you guys are getting the idea. You get the idea of how, um, you know, natural law operates in an order. There's an order. Like, it doesn't just mean, like, there's no structure. There is a structure. I have to operate in love and in grace. Just like nature has so much grace, right? You can poison yourself with drugs and 
alcohol and all kinds of things. And your body will somehow try to fight for its life and come back to life if you let it. Haven't we all witnessed that? You know, it says like when we take action that does not align with our emotions, we are in opposition with ourselves. And that is immoral action. When you're trying to poison yourself, you're in opposition with yourself. You know how they say suicide is a sin? I mean, really, it is you trying to be in opposition with yourself. Why would you do that? How do you align with yourself? Also, everybody's responsible for their actions. You can have bad thoughts or bad words sometimes, you know, and you can ask people for forgiveness or you can forgive yourself for that bad thought or something, you know, or you get a scary thought and you go, wait a minute, I'm not doing that. No, I'm, I'm not worried about money. Things are always working out for me, right? You're not going to allow yourself to believe that you can't have what it is that you should have if it's logical that you should have it, right? I need these containers for the food church so that it can hold the food to offer the, to the people. I should be able to just get those containers. Like, what's the problem? We need them. <laughs> so therefore, you know, we should be able to have them. It's logical. People expect it to be in a container, right? Yeah, I'm to the point now, whenever uh, a need presents itself in my family, I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, I need this. So I know that the universe or God or source is going to be responsible to show me the way to provide for this need. Like if the need is there, the provision is coming. Yeah. If, if the provision wasn't coming, the need wouldn't be there. Right. Until you need it. You don't need it. That's what's going on with us. You know, I use land, for example, like we've wanted land for a long time. We didn't know what to do with land. Now we know what to do with land. So the land is going to come. A lot of people just want things. They don't know what they want to do with it. They don't know why they want it. They want it because somebody else has it. That isn't really real. <laughs> Mm -mm. That isn't really real. Wanting a pair of jeans that somebody else has isn't the same thing as wanting to eat because other people are eating. Mm -hmm. Let's just be clear, okay? <laughs> For anybody who's confused about what is needed. Okay, the law of freedom. The law of freedom and morality are directly proportional. Isn't that interesting? Mm. As morality increases, then freedom increases. And as morality declines, then freedom declines. We're in the middle of a crazy time when people are walking in lies, speaking lies, taking action, pretending to do things that they know they shouldn't be doing because it's not required because it's a lie. But they're doing it because somebody's saying you need to do this and they just do it because they don't want to speak the truth of no i'm not doing that because this is dumb that is also by the way friends immoral it is immoral not to stand up for truth do i look like somebody who just wants to argue with people all the time do I just look like I just want to fight with you and make you just do what I say? Like all the, I mean, do you think that this is what I want to do every single day? Mm -mm. 
the only reason that we're having this conversation is to make people think about it so that they'll start taking better action because freedom and morality are directly proportional. And if we want humanity to be free and live an abundant life, we need more people to understand what me and Emily understand. Don't you guys want to just operate freely knowing that you can have everything that you need without struggling? There is no reward in struggle. Were you being rewarded, Emily? Because you were struggling. I look back now and I can see where I learned a lot of lessons. Um, but yeah, the the pain that I endured um, didn't give me any bonus points at all. You mean there was no gain in pain? <laughs> no. Yeah, guys, there's no gain in pain. There's not. I mean, maybe when you're working out and you're trying to get your body back in shape, you feel a little wonky while you're doing that. I mean, that happens, I guess. But <laughs> when you're building muscle and you're breaking muscle to build it, okay, this is not the same, though. It's not the same. Um, another way to say it would be that the presence of truth and morality in the lives of people of any given society is inversely proportional to the presence of tyranny and slavery in that society. Hmm. That's interesting, right? Also, here's another thing, like force and violence. These words are often spoken about as if they're the same, right? Like, and they're used interchangeably when in fact they're diametrically opposed. Like they're the polar opposites. For example, force is the capacity to do work or cause physical change, energy, strength, you know, like active power. Violence is the immoral initiation of physical power to coerce, compel, or restrain. Hmm. Force is like an action which is in harmony with morality natural law because it doesn't violate another person's rights coercive action which is in opposition to morality and natural law because it involves the violation of other people's rights that's violence right force an action which always assesses the right to take um Meaning like it includes like defense, like against violence when you're defending yourself. So if you have to take force because you have to defend yourself, that is not the same as the action, which um, is to just take um, possession of another person. You know, we're talking about like kidnapping or violence, like hitting them or, you know, you know, theft of life or, Property you know, damage. yes. So force and violence are polar opposites. But I think that people are confused, just generally speaking, with what is moral and what is immoral and that, you know, they're walking in that moral relativism, which we started talking about from the beginning. And so you have this new age mentality where you're not supposed to give any attention towards negative things. But if you want positive things to happen, you need to identify what the negative things are that you don't want to happen. So you know what you want. So you know what you don't want. So you can walk towards what you want and away from what you don't want. You can't take action that aligns with your emotions if you don't know what the opposite is, right? Mm -hmm. How do you know what's good if you don't know what's bad? How do you know what you like if you haven't been able to look at the tapestry? So this is, this is like, you know, um, a new age fallacy. 
it's you know what I've been learning, Emily, is that everything that we want to do that we think is a better move. Organic vegetables, for example, OK. We're finding out now that the plants have more poison in them than the, even the chemicals for them to be non-organic or organic. So who, it doesn't even matter at this point if it's organic or not organic. But it was a trick to get us to just pay for not sprayed produce, right? By the corporatocracy that is always playing this game. Have you noticed like, you know, they come up with the clean mayonnaise and then they come up with a cleaner mayonnaise. There's a good, better, best. Mm -hmm. How about just make freaking mayonnaise that people can eat and stop the crap of the lies. This is immorality. Okay, some people think this is variety. It's not variety when you know that it's going to cause harm. An addiction. I mean, did you just make that up, Emily? No, no, I see it every day. People are absolutely addicted to their chips and their soda and their uh, soybean oil. It's sad. What about our kids? Sugar. Television. Television, yeah. TikTok. <laughs> yeah, the phone. I mean, these screens. Anyway, I hope that this conversation that we're having today is helping people out there just really take a, a better look at what it is that they're doing day to day. Because what I learned from this whole exercise um, as I was finding, you know, these things out and learning more about natural law was how much I was in opposition with myself and how much I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> and, and then I just started not doing it anymore. And I feel like anybody out there, if you are hearing this for the first time, you know, the things that we were saying, the things that we were talking about today might hurt your feelings, might make you feel like, like we're attacking your belief system. But I think that when you really run this conversation back over your life experiences, you will realize if you're honest with yourself that, you know, you were doing things that are completely immoral. I know I was. And when I say immoral, I know a lot of you think that I'm just sitting here like judging other people. I'm just, I'm talking about me. This is just between me and me. Just like I'm asking for this to be between you and you. And I was saying that to Emily, but I don't think I, I didn't really exactly say it like that to you. Right, Emily? That you were judging me? Yeah. No, I didn't feel that at all. No, I felt, I felt that you were sharing insight with me and I was just looking at it going, that's too much. I, I, it, I don't have the capacity for all that you are presenting to me right now until it was a need. And I was like, I need to understand. And then therefore the capacity came. And I, it just opened me up and I had the capacity to um, take the actions that I needed to take in order to walk in my sovereignty and not be controlled by the choices that I thought were there. I, it was like this illusion that I was under that I, I was like, oh, well, I have to choose this because I have to have food stamps because I have to do this. And then it was just like, a couple of conversations with me the, and all of a sudden these have twos just started to dissolve. And it wasn't like I had to white knuckle to force them away. It's like they just fell away. Like, like almost just like lies that just like fall to the ground. It was just like the lies were like, oh, darn it. Like she saw us. The tricks. It was just the light. When the darkness in the room goes away because you turn the light on. That's about how fast you can get rid of these false beliefs when you're honest with yourself. So in natural law, we're asking you really just to, if you're being honest with yourself, then you will 
want to align with yourself so that you can have more freedom. And a lot of people are like, how are we going to get enough people to want to do this? You know, because everybody's not going to change just because I decided to change. Well, I don't know. I think that the more I changed, anytime that somebody gets a whiff of me now, they want to know what's going on and they want to figure out what I'm doing. And then the next thing you know, they're like an Emily, churn, change their whole life around. Isn't it fun to watch people empower themselves? Like they're all of a sudden, every time you come around somebody, then it looks like they're the light bulb that you just kind of screw them in a little bit. That just the light, their light comes on. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do. We just want to turn your light on, guys. Mm. That's it. I love it. All right. I think that that's enough for today, Emily. Um, I love you so much for joining me. Um, you guys, we are having this conversation every Thursday at noon. We hope that we are tightening in some light bulbs out there. And you guys are just like, you know, we want you to shine bright and shine your light and, you know, just walk into your full power because you are important. You matter. You are worthy beyond belief. You were just born that way. And we love you. And check out the link below and see what, what Emily's doing. You can join us next week here on my YouTube channel or on Rumble. I'm going to hopefully be able to get Odyssey to work. Otherwise, I am going to be posting these there so you can see them. Um, and feel free to make comments and talk with us in the future. I know that a lot of this is kind of new to everybody, but we would love to have conversations with people about it and talk about these things. So, you know, feel free to just jump in anytime. You have anything to add, Miss Emily? Nope. Thanks for a great conversation. Have a great one, you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.